Amani's share price uh, fell sharply today after South Africa's third largest gold miner released quarterly results. Amani returned to making a profit in the three quarters that ended in March, but that was largely due to a higher Rand gold price and the miner was beset by production issues. Production fell by 12% due to an accident at the Doernkorp mine earlier this year in which nine miners were killed. That was in a fire and rock fall. The company says it's embarked on a safety drive to prevent a repeat of that incident. The price of gold began to slide last year and gold miners have been struggling to make profits. For many years, South Africa was the world's largest gold producer, but it's now only the fifth biggest in the world. Well, let's discuss further. I'm now joined by Harmony CEO, Graham Briggs. Thank you for your time this evening, Good evening Graham. Thanks. Can, can we start with your safety <coughs> record? Because sure. it, it's less than glowing at the moment. Um, yep. We saw Duan Corp, nine workers killed there, five fatal incidents that this year, I understand. And you're talking about fairly drastic measures to yeah. deal with that. What are those? Yeah. Uh, Francis, I think if you, if you sort of look at the whole safety on all the mines, basically, in South African industry, uh, there has been a huge change and we've seen a downward trend in fatal accidents, uh, which has been quite dramatic over the last few years. Um, however, so our, our February incident, I think, was uh, really an anomaly. It was a fire which um, was caused by various issues, seismic event and so on. And it resulted in us saying, well, we've really not only damaged our own uh, record, but we've actually damaged the industry's mm -hmm. record. And therefore, we have to be quite drastic and step in and do things, uh, get some independent reviews going on all our operations, uh, don't skim the surface, really dig down and, and find out if there's something that we are doing wrong, if there's some things that we should be doing better, improve things. So it's basically looking at all aspects, not only safety, the systems, the people, it's looking at everything. And yeah, I, I understand you were quite cautious when, when you spoke um, at the time. Do, do you still believe that that accident could not have been prevented or, or was it preventable? Well, uh, I think what we're going through is the whole investigation at the moment. Uh, there have been issues that have arisen that obviously could be preventable. Really, when you look back on most accidents, you could say that was preventable mm -hmm. anyway. But uh, in this particular accident, we don't know all the root causes. That will come out in the investigation. Could, like you say, uh, government and, and mining houses have been saying for years that, that the record was getting much better. We yep. were heading towards sort of a zero yep. fatalities. Could uh, um, some, some laxity, some complacency have set in? Uh, there's always that chance. There's always that chance. You know, we are a very labor intensive business in the gold mining industry. Therefore, we have a lot of people underground and it just takes one person to take a little bit of a chance, do something different and then you have an accident mm -hmm. developing. So uh, it is driven by a large number of people and, and that is sort of a little bit of negative. However, that's not something that we are saying is the cause of this accident. You know, we need to have a system have preventative measures which will uh, eliminate those accidents. Mm. I imagine you were on the, the ground at, at Duan Corp. Uh, I explain what it's like. It must be very difficult for, for workers to, to then continue uh, going underground when, when the mine opens up again. It's yeah. something they, they think about it every day. Yeah. How do you deal with those sorts yeah, of things? Yeah, look, it's, it's hugely emotional. Um, I, I actually heard of the accident. I was down in Cape Town. I was during the Indaba and uh, it happened one evening and I flew up the next day and spent the rest of, uh, basically the rest of the week at Duan Corp. Um, it's a case of really focusing on the job at hand, which is obviously recovering uh, any possible people that are living, uh, then when eventually that gets to a state recovering uh, the bodies. But it's hugely emotional, not only for, you know, obviously the families, but, you know, the whole entire workforce, you know, it has a it's like a black cloud on the operation mm -hmm. and and one has to really get the whole workforce going again um, and and that is difficult so uh, I, but I think the guys are doing well in getting the morale back up and and really being focused on not having mm -hmm. accidents well let's talk about that further because these are workers that are also uh, being actively recruited by by union amku so amku the the minority um, among gold miners but they they tried to uh, reignite strike action saying they had not uh, agreed to the agreement uh, from from last year talking about that twelve and a half thousand rand in in gold as well mm. how, how do you feel looking over at events on the platinum belt right now 
Well, you know, the 12,500 has become the symbol of AMCU. And, uh, and it's in a situation, <coughs> excuse me, with the platinum miners where there is no negotiation actually happening. You know, the AMCU are stuck on the 12.5%. Uh, I think the uh, offer that the platinum miners put on the table is very reasonable. Uh, it gets to 12 and a half over, a f over a period, it basically is a 10% increase per year, roughly uh, for four years. So it, it certainly is a, a good increase. It's much higher than inflation. It's, it's a huge cost to those platinum miners, but it is in the right direction. Um, but AMCU is not negotiating. They are stuck on the 12 and a half thousand and there's no discussion happening. Mm -hmm. Now you can't negotiate with somebody that's stuck on something and doesn't want to move. You know, negotiation is always about give and take. How, how does that offer compared to what workers are earning in, in the gold mining industry at, at your mines? But, uh, because you must know that that sentiment will, will follow and, and affect you in future. Well, I think there, there are several issues there. One is, uh, you know, our, our platinum miners and gold miners really earn very similar mines. They've been sort of uh, similar Are we salaries. About five thousand rand. Uh, yeah, it's it's probably a basic of uh, entry level. A novice would get around about five thousand rand as the basic salary. On top of that, he would get a living out allowance of probably in the region of one thousand eight hundred at the moment. It's going up. Uh, there are medical benefits and so on. So you end up with a salary probably closer to, on a platinum mine, is probably closer to 9,000 or thereabouts. Mm. On a gold mine, maybe slightly less. And then on top of that, you've got bonuses and overtime, those sort of things. So if you look at a novice's salary, you're probably looking in the gold mining industry around about nine to 10,000. Uh, maybe slightly higher if the bonuses are good. But, you know, that's entry level uh, salary. Uh, mm. it's, it's higher than a teacher's salary, you know, and, and the teachers are qualified. So, you know, and as I say, so from there on, that's the lowest category and then it's, it's much higher. Um, now, I think, you know, those, those poor platinum miners there in, in uh, Rustenburg have really lost out quite badly because after three and a half months, you know, you've lost probably a lot more than you're ever going to gain, irrespective of the salary increase you're going to get because your payments well, on your house... there is backdated pay, so... Well, no, the backdated pay is simply those months that they were working to... Because this is the increase we're talking about last year. We're mm -hmm. talking about July last year's increase. Uh, that's how long this discussion has been going on. So, you know, although the strike is three and a half uh, months, we're actually going back to July where that's, that increase would have been implemented. So we're talking about the difference of what they earned in that time and the increase. So it would probably amount to, in, in a sort of uh, an, a category four worker, which is the lowest category, probably about three, three and a half thousand rand. That is not going to let you recover what you've lost out on your car payments or your house payments or, you know, your medical. I mean, how have you survived in, if you need medical attention? It's, well, it's terrible for those guys. Well, let's come back to gold because th this this is expected to affect um, the entire mining industry. Well, whatever happens here will affect uh, perceptions, expectation, yeah. uh, expectations mm -hmm. of workers, things like that. Yeah. Um, are, is AMCU graining ground? Uh, what is happening on the ground? And, and I'd like to know finally, are, are you really working at those labor relations? Because it's been said that we have the worst labor relations yeah. in the world. And, and that must be uh, partly the employer, uh, your mind's yeah. fault. Yeah. So I, I think in the past what has happened, because we're probably into 30 years of NUM, uh, a lot of the uh, discussion, negotiation, uh, messaging was coming basically through the union. Now, that was an error in, in some of our ways, and we've reversed that. So, we, you know, we have a right to talk to our employees, as, as any management has, and you don't have to talk through the union. And so we have now, since the Casasa Leto event, which, uh, you know, so basically since the end of 2012, we have upped our communication levels a lot with uh, workers. And that's, you know, communication of two ways. Um, so that has changed dramatically. The, the human resource environment has changed dramatically. We now are dealing with multiple unions on our operations, multiple uh, even interested parties, because sometimes we don't know if they belong to unions. So, so that has been upped quite a lot. I think if you, if you take this, uh, the, the gold wage increase uh, and what is happening in the platinum industry, 
you know, a worker will now see what has happened in the platinum industry. You know, I'm going to be out of work for three and a half months or more. I'm going to lose my car, lose my house. How am I going to feed my family? How am I going to put uniforms? And I mean, that isn't... So you're actually encouraged. That is not negotiating for a better uh, salary. That is, that is negotiating with fanaticism, if you like. You know, it's just, it's just fanatical to, to go that way. It's the symbol, following the symbol of 12,500... Um, but, you know, what workers need to do is negotiate for better conditions of employment. And, and I think, uh, you, know, I, I, you know, we need to, or workers need to decide who they follow to get, to get better conditions. So I, I wouldn't see a mass exodus to AMCU from NUM, but then there may be movements. Uh, we have two operations which have uh, quite a significant number. Kasasa led to about 70, 72% of the workforce is AMCU. And in the Free State, uh, Masimong is probably about 30%. So, so it's so. something you're, you're watching. I wish we could chat further. Thank yeah. you for your time this evening. Um, and maybe we, next time we can look at the, the future of, of the gold mining industry, which everyone is considering right now. Thank yeah, you very much. Yeah, we'd love to do that. Thanks. CEO of Harmony Gold, Graham Briggs.